Silence, please, everyone. Um, Clint Adams is going to be speaking about HOpenPGP, a Haskell OpenPGP implementation. So um, I'm a little bit sick, so I apologize in advance if I uh, collapse in a coughing fit or something worse. Uh, I, uh, I assume all of you have seen my talk from uh, last year, so uh, this is, this is going to be a little redundant, but uh, HOpenPGP is an implementation of OpenPGP in Haskell. Uh, it's, uh, it's primary consumer, as far as I know, is uh, HOpenPGP tools, which is referred to by uh, RiseUp's OpenPGP best practices and also now the, uh, the key signing party instructions uh, at uh, DevConf this year. So uh, the intent of this talk is to explain what's changed since uh, last year's DevConf, um, which uh, is um, some some bug fixes, some uh, incompatible API changes, dependencies, uh, and I'm, I'll go uh, into a little more detail on some of these. Um, so uh, the API changes have mostly been for type safety. So, uh, for example, uh, in in the olden days of uh, 2013. Uh, we use the type synonym timestamp for uh, Word 32 because uh, most of time expressions in the OpenPGP standard are 32-bit uh, uh, unsigned integers. But some of them are expressed uh, as seconds since the epoch and, or not actually not the epoch, some of them are absolute values of time, and some of them are durations. So even though uh, the standard calls the key expiration time the key expiration time, it is number of seconds since the creation time. So uh, I wanted to uh, help the uh, user understand uh, which type is which, so to, to reduce confusion. So uh, now we have two new type wrappers, uh, one for duration and one for uh, time to, uh, so now you'll get a compile time error if you try to do the wrong thing. Um, and uh, I think I talked about this last year a little. Uh, instead of allowing you to have a list of uh, MPIs for a key, uh, it doesn't make any sense to have no MPIs at all, so we're going to enforce at the type level uh, that this list has to be non-empty. Um, and since I was breaking things, I uh, decided to change the type of the user IDs to, from strings to text, which theoretically will give us a performance boost, but probably doesn't matter at all. Um, so a lot of uh, the dependencies have changed out from underneath, including uh, switching from serial and serial conduit to binary and binary conduit, NCWLP print to WP, WLP print extras, and IXET to IXET typed, which is uh, primarily because the former doesn't work with GC 7.10, which will be uh, in the uh, Debian archive pretty soon. Well, it's already in experimental, but it'll be in uh, SID pretty soon, so I want to be prepared for that. Uh, I was also abusing uh, the show instances for fingerprints, so uh, in order to not violate the uh, principle of read and show uh, round tripping, uh, the show instance now ha contains no spaces. If you want uh, spaces in your fingerprint output, you need to use the pretty instance. And there's more test coverage, and which is still not complete. So if you feel like contributing test cases, that would be great. Now, more interestingly, uh, there are now uh, JSON instances for transferable keys and all the types used by transferable keys. Uh, so this means you can, if you can parse uh, a transferable OpenPGP key with HOpenPGP, 
you can output it as JSON or YAML. Uh, so this is uh, somebody's key, uh, and hopefully you can read that. Uh, so at the top you'll see the uh, the RSA uh, MPIs and uh, the timestamps. The the schema of this is clearly suboptimal. So if somebody uh, has strong opinions on how this sh should actually look, and I see Paul Tag is volunteering, uh, uh, feel, feel free to uh, help uh, get this into a, a sane format because um, it is definitely not ideal. Um, so because uh, we're using ASON for for the JSON, we get uh, YAML output for free, so uh, depending on what you prefer, you can just swap that out and every, every bit of data is gonna be the same, just in the different format. And so there's uh, some more YAML. This is, this is either uh, Paul Tag's key or Francesca's, I can't tell them apart anymore. Uh, and as you can see, the the JPEG is an array of uh, byte values, which I, I really don't know what the, the correct way to handle this is, so if anyone else does, that would be uh, good to know. And uh, the serialization is a bit better. Uh, it used to choke on unknown S2K types, and GNU PG has some sort of uh, proprietary uh, S2K type called 101, uh, and so I ran into this in the wild, and uh, and now it can cope with that. Um, so the the uh, OpenPGP tools uh, can do filtering either on uh, transferable keys or individual packets, and that code is in the uh, library itself. It used to be split between uh, more evenly, and now it's mostly in the library. Uh, and it used to be more poorly designed, uh, so there were separate filtering languages for uh, public keys and signatures and other, and you could not uh, construct a complex query in a sane way uh, if you wanted to do that. So the, if you were operating on a packet stream, the filters would only apply to the packets of their type, and so you could get surprising results. Um, and that was using Addo Parsec uh, for the parsing, and Someone convinced me to rewrite it using Alex and Happy, which are the Haskell equivalents of uh, Flex and Bison, or Lex and Yak. Uh, and the parser is completely redone, and so now you can do queries like, uh, so the first two here uh, are things you could do before, uh, but this is, you can do them with this syntax now. Uh, and the um, the last ones are more interesting because now there's uh, th this is using higher order functions, so you can do matching on uh, substructures of the transferable key. So, like you can um, search on all the UIDs or some of or any of the UIDs. Uh, not every one of UIDs contains that sign. If you want to look for people that have UIDs that uh, are not obviously email addresses, like uh, Weasel ha just has his name, or a, a couple other people do this. Um, or uh, if en find any key where the public key algorithm is ECDSA. Um, or where the primary key is less than uh, 2048 bits in size, but you have a subkey larger than that, which is pretty common. So, uh, 
that's probably the thing I'm most excited about. Um, and then, apropos of nothing, uh, Aníbal asked me to do um, uh, an analysis on the uh, DC-15 key signing party uh, key ring. So I'm just going to segue into that. Uh, so uh, this says sort of because uh, there is one defective key in the key ring and uh, HOpenPGP choked on it. So I got to, I got to discover a fun bug. Uh, uh, GNU PG also does buggy things with this key, so that's exciting. Um, and hopefully uh, someone talks to Werner about that uh, pretty soon. Uh, so there are actually 283 keys in the key ring, so this does not reflect any of that. Um, and uh, the five unknown, or the, you, you'll see five other pubkey algorithms and five unknown sizes. Uh, those are type 22, which I believe is ed 25519. Uh, no? Okay. Uh, yes? Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, that is not yet supported. So, if somebody wants to, to do some uh, development, uh, eventually we probably want to support that. And. Uh, people are still using RipeMD160 for self-sigs, and a fair amount are using SHA-1. Um, the longest paths in the self-contained set uh, are six hops long, and here they are, and if you want to know who these people are, you're going to have to do the analysis yourself. <laughs> um, and the strong connectivity uh, analysis shows there's 193 keys in the strong set and a couple of islands and then uh, all but 215 keys are uh, singletons. So hopefully after the, uh, the rolling key signing of this uh, uh, conference, those get a lot better. Um, so, right, um, okay, so I guess now would be a good time for questions, uh, if anyone has questions. Hello. Right. Um, you've mentioned a lot of analysis functionality yes. in HOpenPGP. Is there also mechanisms for creating and manipulating signatures and key material? Sort of. Um, the the principle I've been uh, going with thus far is to not. Uh, implement anything destructive. So uh, there's, if today you want to use a function that'll um, output uh, a signature, you're going to have to do a little bit of work. The um, the cryptographic support is there uh, for for the algorithms that are supported. Uh, there's there's a tiny bit of uh, there's, there's basically no elliptic curve. Uh, there's, there's a tiny stub for it, but that's about it. Uh, we can do RSA and DSA. We can't do Elgamal. Um, and that's pretty much the situation. So uh, that needs a little bit of work, but you could, you could do something.
Any more questions, anyone? We have five minutes remaining. There's still a chance for questions. Yay. What was this problematic key you mentioned? So the... Um, uh, what it about the bug report you, you sent to the um, packaging list? D did you send a bug report to the... Uh, not yet, package? not yet. Okay, uh, so there was not a thing, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the key has uh, a subkey packet, a, a, a public subkey packet, followed by a user ID packet, followed by a subkey binding sig. Yeah, okay. So, so that sometimes happens and uh, GPG should uh, um, reorder it. So that's very, very old code. It does reorder it, but not in the right way. So Yeah, it's not always possible to, to, to do yeah. this. So, so it's very limited. It was our bug fix for, for a key server um, well, 15 years ago or so. Yeah, I yeah. So it, it does not work perfectly. So and I will uh, delete this key. Um, uh, no. <laughs> So I don't know whether it's uh, it's worth the time to to uh, for for these rare cases to do something about it. Something. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the right thing to do is, but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah of course we could we could just do, well, if we find someone who want to fix this, okay. So um, I'll expect it. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to DKG. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a lot of work to test this. No? Yeah, but that, that's the thing. It's it's not it's just possible, but uh, we have to. See from where to take the time to fix all the bugs and yep. try to rest. Right. Yeah. Are we done? Oh, we have one more. It's being massively self serving now. Can you show us an example of using HOpenPGP to do something trivial? Something trivial? I know. To input a public key ring and just list the keys. Um, hold on. Live demo. <laughs> so, The font's too small, isn't it? <laughs> that was not right. Oh, boy. And I can't type. So, let's... Uh, lists of the key ring with uh, GNU PG like output. Um, we can also dump the uh, the packets. Oh god! So. Um, to do to do graphing or, or pathfinding, that'll take a few minutes. Um, so I was actually thinking of a .hs file that you could show us. Oh oh, that I'm not prepared to do that on the spot. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you 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 can you can look at the Open PGP tools sources or or the test suite. Um, the Um, I, I would like people to, uh, to help out, so if there's uh, things I can do to make that easier, uh, please let me know. Um, I think I, I certainly uh, would like to have a, uh, a better library for, uh, for Haskell use and eventually um, uh, for use by... Uh, by other languages through the FFI. So, uh, if if you're interested, but uh, uh, overwhelmed or, or confused by uh, some of the crazy things, uh, please feel free to approach me. 
Um, and if there are no other questions, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Clint. Yeah.